<laughs> you gonna say something? Hello? Maybe we should have practiced that opening. I've got a special guest here who's supposed to be following my lead. She's done a terrible job three seconds into this video. I hope she, you can do better. Um, so today we are gonna talk about the Beatles, the White Album, and uh, a little fact that probably none of you know, it's not actually called the White Album. It's actually just a self-titled or a non-titled album, but I think colloquially people refer to it as the White Album. Is that right? That's right, it's called right. the Beatles. That's right, well, yeah. She is the Beatles expert, I need her help. I'm not a Beatles expert, so I, I brought her in to, uh, to, to help me out, to throw me a life preserver, also to boost ratings. I think people <laughs> like, it seems that from past, you, you've done two episodes before. Yes. I did Kiss. Alive. Uh, and the Beatles. The whole, the whole uh, discography. Yeah, the whole discography. Right? Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, so, so she's got a, she, she's my crutch or my cane, my walking stick, whatever you like. Um, I talked about Help a couple of weeks ago. I love Help. Help is, is a great, great album. I would even say it's not one of my top 10 albums ever by any band. But it is a great, great album, and I, I, as far as Beatles goes, oh my God, Help is fantastic. The White Album. I'll get to my opinion in a minute. What do you? What do you? You're I'm, over. We're gonna get to track by track. What's your overall view of the White Album? I like it a lot. A lot. It's not my favorite. My Speak favorite. Up. My favorite is um, Every Road. Let's step up a little bit. But my, it, it, I had a season in which I used to listen to it a lot. I like it. The White Album. Yeah. All right. If, if you consider the White Album, Revolver, Help, uh, Abbey Road, uh, Let It Be, uh, Sgt. Pepper, Yellow Submarine, With the Beatles, Meet the Beatles, whatever, what is this? Is it um, number two? I would say no. Number one is Abbey Road, second is Let It Be. Um, it's probably third or fourth. Okay. And regardless of what she thinks and what I think, this is considered. It's true, right? One of the greatest albums ever. Yeah. I think it's the Beatles' signature album. Maybe this or Sgt. Pepper is, um, is is their signature album, you know, in terms of influence and what everybody likes. Uh, I'll save my opinion, my general opinion for the end. Maybe you'll get an idea of what I think about this album when we go through the through the track by track. Now, the reason that, that uh, we're doing this today is because my friend Miguel gave me actually gave Lily, I guess. By the way, if you don't know, Lily is my ex-wife. We're not married anymore, <laughs> but um, I guess we share love still for some things musically. The Beatles kind of being one of them. Kiss, Kiss played their last concert last night. And um, maybe we should talk about Kiss again sometime. <laughs> no, the Beatles today. All right, today the Beatles. Um, so, so Miguel graciously gave Lily, actually, um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, my friend Miguel from California flew from Los Angeles to Mexico City to go see the Corona Capital Festival and he had bought some records for me and I talked to him on video chat the night before and he said, Lily really, she likes the Beatles, right? And I said, yeah, way more than me. She's like the biggest Beatles fan that I know. And uh, he said, oh, I've got something for her and he, he showed me in, in, um, in, in the video chat, he went through some stuff and he gave me, I'm going to show that momentarily, uh, a special edition of the White Album uh, that I'm gonna I'm gonna get to. There there are kind of uh, two two versions that well I'll show this one the the one that everybody knows with this beautiful awesome artwork album cover. Look at that. Uh -huh. Look at all the detail and it looks incredible. White. Yeah, it, it's so white. <laughs> and then there's the back cover. And if you can see if the light hits it properly, it's embossed. And it's the, Beatles, the Beatles. Yeah, is embossed there somewhere. And then if you open it up. Yeah, there. Yeah. Then if you uh, open it up, there's uh, pictures of uh, Ace, Gene, Paul, and Peter. <laughs> and, and all the song titles are there. And so there's that. Uh, and it's, it's, now there's the, the version that, uh, that Miguel gave to Lilia. Brand new, yeah. Now we're gonna also do the I unboxing. Haven't hmm? I haven't opened it. Yeah, we're gonna do the unboxing of this too. This is the, uh, you can see it's the, the 45th anniversary edition. Nice, thick, juicy box set. Lily is very excited. She's had this for a couple of weeks. Couldn't, couldn't, could barely resist uh, the lure of, of cutting it open. So we're going to do that today. It's the same songs. Now this is, um, this has got, it's, it's got the two original albums on discs one and two. 
Disc three and four are our demos. Uh, they're called the Escher demos. Yeah, Escher demos. Do you know anything about them? No. No, okay, she hasn't heard them. We're not gonna talk about those. If you wanna hear about the Escher demos, go find somebody else on YouTube who's willing to talk about them. Um, Do you know what's special about this album? No. That almost all the songs were written in, the, in their trip to India. Oh, I did know that. Well, I didn't know about this album, but I know that there was some, George yeah. Harrison especially, right, was really influenced yes. by the trip to India. For anybody that is not a Beatles fan, they went to uh, study meditation to India in transcendental a, transcendental meditation with the Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. So, um, George Harrison was the one who was interested in that, and he took all the band members to India to study meditation. And it was a very famous trip because there were a lot of celebrities there. Um, two pet boy, uh, two uh, Beach Boys. Oh, I oh we're gonna talk. I'm gonna, I want to talk about Beach Boys. And also Mia Farrow's sister. I'll come to that later because that's an important point. All right. So um, yeah, they were pretty much all of them written in India, and two of the White Album songs, Polythene Pam and another one that I don't remember. Polythene Pam is not on this album. That's on. Uh, no, but it was written. Uh, I was written for this album. All right, and also from this is a. Uh, Valmari Guitar Gently Weeps <laughs> is on this album, and we will talk about that too. So, um, and this has got the album cover. This is the, the four postcards that came in the original version of the White Album. Now, the White Album, this, this was a, a, um, an anniversary edition. How did I get the White Album? From her, where did she get it from me? I bought, I bought the, the, the one that I just showed, this one. I bought this for, uh, for Lily for her birthday some years ago. And then he took it away. Yeah, then I took it back. When, when she got this a couple of weeks ago, I said, you don't need both of them, right? So uh, we're not married anymore. Yeah, that's why we're not married, because we, we fight yes. about records, yes. amongst other things. And um, so, so I, I, uh, I re-gifted this. Uh, I, I took it back. Um, so, so I said, she doesn't need to, right? So as far as I know, it's the same records. The only difference is this has the, the two bonus records with the Escher demos on it, which are mostly... I, I think original versions of the the songs from the album, well, like some titles I don't know, like uh, "Junk," "Sour Milk Tea," "Child of Nature," "Circles." Ah, yeah, "Me, Mr. Muscle, and Polythene Pam," which were on "Let It Be." No, uh, no, Abbey Road. Abbey Road, yes. My two favorite songs of the Beatles ever. Yeah, they're, they're like a, um, a medley. A medley, a little medley. Uh, "Not Guilty" and "What's the New Mary Jane." Um, and then all the other demos, Escher demos, are original versions of the songs from the White Album. Um, so we're, we're going to talk about just the White Album straight up, not not the Escher demos. You want to open it? I hope I don't drop it. All right, yeah, don't drop it. It's uh, it's very valuable. And again, thank you to Miguel. No, I should yes, poke your eye. Yes, no, I'm sorry. Mic. <laughs> yeah, um, thank you, Miguel. Right, here, let me. Um, you want to do? Very, it? I'll, very I'll hold happy. it. You can cut it. Don't cut my fingers uh, off. Very happy with my gift, my Miguel. Face. Yeah. Very generous. I am loving it, even though I haven't opened it. But we'll see what's in here. Yeah, can you believe a no guy just said, "Oh yeah, I'll give her one." He had he had three copies. He had two extra ones. Um, are you gonna save the the sticker? I don't know. Maybe. All right, we'll keep it uh, okay, I'll take intact. Okay, the plastic and the knife. Let's get that knife oh. away. Jesus. We'll put put this. Uh, it's heavy. Over here. Yeah, it is very heavy. It's four records plus, presumably, is there some kind of booklet in there? Um, it doesn't say, but I, I would imagine there's some kind of inserts in there. Okay, so this opens like All right, let me, I'll, I'll open it. I'll hold it. You can open it. Yes, please. Doesn't smell like anything. I love the I smell of vinyl in the morning or in I the afternoon. I'm hoping for some smell. All right, so this is, um, ah, what is this? Blah, this blah, is... Blah. Uh, that's a little booklet. Oh, yeah, it's your yeah. product. Okay. Wow, look at that's that. Man, of, that's a lot of text. That's a lot of text. I think this is, oh, well, it's the introduction. Yeah, it's the whole story about how the album was uh, recorded, written. Basically, what I told you in many, many words. And we have some pictures of the Beatles in India. Um... Explanation of the Escher demos and pictures of them actually recording the album. John, Paul, George, and Ringo. Uh, 
This is them writing, this is them recording, all right? And here's another version of the one that I just showed. So this is the album. Yeah, you don't need two of those. Yeah, it's the exact same. Okay. It, inside it has a, a booklet, I think it should. A decent booklet. This is just the album. Huh? Oh. Oh, so I'm not having, I'm not doing the book. Let's see what's uh, Hold on, is, is there something in the other side? The, no, the, the, the postcards? That's it, all right. And now, ah, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, see, yeah. I knew it. Ah, the, those are the, uh, the postcards. Well, for anybody that hasn't seen this. And those are in my version too. Or dudes, mm, I might get this framed. Yeah, they're good. They're on good paper, no? Very, uh, yeah. very thick, heavy right. paper. All right, so here is, you can open that. I don't drop things. Ah, uh, there's the booklet. There, you get okay. your booklet. Same one as in the other one. So this is just the Escher demos. Oh, it's the exact same layout. The same layout. There's nothing inside? Okay. Nothing else inside. Yeah. So you can keep that. And this is, this is the booklet that... Oh, it's like a poster. It folds out into a poster with the lyrics. And it's the exact same as oh. the original one, but the, the demo song titles. Is this oh. what's in the other album? Yeah, same thing. Yep. Oh, cool. All right. Yeah, pictures of them in India. And in the recording studio. Just roll your neck like a well-cooked piece of asparagus. <laughs> All right, so that's uh, that's the unboxing, right? Yeah. Uh, let, me, let me put everything back. I'll um, just just for the, the sake of ease, we'll we'll leave that aside and we'll we'll do it from uh, from my version. All right. So um, so what we're gonna do if you follow this series, this is episode 104, 105, somewhere around there. We're gonna go through it track by track. Now I don't have a lot to say about a lot of these songs. Yeah. But she probably does. There are some that I really, really, really dislike. Oh, okay. Well, we and some may... that I really like. All right, we may agree on that. Um, I had to write notes. Now, my as my yeah, notes are here. Uh, yeah, my, my notes are here, uh, which is the opposite of how we normally are. You can follow the other. Um. Yeah, I, we shall begin. I, I've listened to this album in full in my life. I didn't. She got me into the Beatles. I talked about this when I did Help a few weeks ago. I didn't own a Beatles record until you gave me a bunch of CDs in 2002, I think, yes. 2001. Wow, and, uh, many years ago. Yeah, over 20 years ago. Um, so I, I had to write some notes for most of them. There, there are some that I knew and I, um, I don't need notes for, but many I do. So we'll start with... Um, don't look at my notes. Don't steal my <laughs> intellectual property. Uh, all right, so you can start. What do you think about the first song is Back in the USSR? What do you think about that song? I like it a lot. I love the the speed, the rhythm, the energy. It's like um, like an authentic rock and roll song, like, like with the style of the 50s. Like the kind of songs that they used to cover when they used to do covers in Germany when they were very young. I like it and I love Paul. Paul's voice in this song. It's kind of, I like it how he can sing mellow, but he also kind of can sing rough or rockery. Mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah, for me, much. this definitely has, I think, I guess everybody knows this. If I notice this, it's, it's pretty obvious. It has a massive, huge Beatles, sorry, not Beatles, Beach Boys uh, yeah, I was influence say that. at a couple of the, ooh, ooh, ooh. Mm -hmm. very, very Beach Boys for. 20 seconds, I think, a couple of times. Probably in the song. influenced by them being together in the trip in India. All right, I was gonna. They were writing that song. I was gonna ask about that. The Beatles and the Beach Boys, they do have some. They started they around the same time. Yeah, Beach, yeah, uh, Beach Boys were a year or two earlier, maybe, first record. I think so. I'm not. Beach I don't Boys know maybe much a little bit of that about the start. Beach Boys. But I know from reading many books on the Beatles that they were friends or they became friends in India. I don't know. Yeah, a lot of, um, I guess, well, s some um, similarities. I, in, in terms of the, the, the backing vocals, I talk mm -hmm. about that with Help. I, I love the backing vocals on almost every song on Help. Um, now, the next song is Dear Prudence. What do you think about that song? Did Back in the USA. It's, like it's it? okay. I like it. I know it's one of their signature well, songs. Like and it's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, right. it's okay. Um, I think you know what I'm going to say about Dear Prudence. Oh, yeah. But you can you can talk about it first. Dear Prudence is one of my favorite songs. I love how 
slow and ethereal is. And, uh, and I remember many years ago, maybe 23 years ago, you gave me an album that had a version of Dear Prudence that I like probably even more than the original. I like it a lot. I love it a lot. And it's by? You're asking me because you don't know, not because you're handing <laughs> no. it over to me. You don't no, know. You I have no remember. idea. SK. Saigon Kick. Saigon Kick, yes. Now, that's what I was going to say about Dear Prudence. It's for sure, almost by default, my favorite song on this album. Uh, I had, Strong statements. Yeah, well, uh, not really when you, when you hear what I'm going to say about this album in general. Uh, move over a little bit. Just <laughs> tighten it up. Um, I had never heard Dear Prudence before until Saigon Kick covered it. It was on the uh, Japanese or German version of The Lizard. I'm a, one of my favorite bands ever, Saigon Kick, and they covered it. And I thought, oh my God, this song is incredible. And of course, then I downloaded... Um, now, I didn't even... that the, It was on The Lizard, as I mentioned, the, the import Japanese or German version of The Lizard, which came out in 92. I didn't hear Dear Prudence until... I guess 99, like internet era. I feel like that was one of the first wow. songs I ever downloaded or ever searched for on the internet because I hadn't heard it because it was very hard to find the German or Japanese version, whatever it was. And um, so I never heard it until, yeah, maybe 1999 when I was on the internet. And obviously just by virtue of that, did I use that word correctly? By virtue of that, yeah. it's almost like default that Dear Prudence is my favorite song on this album because I love Saigon Kick. And I, yeah, the Saigon Kick version is fantastic. But I mean, the Beatles version, they do it okay. They, they, they're all right. A uh, little trivia for this song. It was written for uh, Mia Farrow's sister, whose name is Prudence Farrow. Oh. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. I don't know these things like she does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I read a lot about them. I have a really bad memory. A lot of things I have forgotten. But if somebody tells me, I go, ah, yeah. Right, that I did remember. No, I, um, um, yeah, I, it's a beautiful song. Uh, just I love the bass line. If you can find an isolated track for the bass, listen to it because the bass is beautiful. Right. And it, it doesn't go with the melody. It's doing its own thing, but I like it a lot. It's, it's kind of a strange song for the second slot on the album. It, it, um, it, it seems a little bit out of place to me. I mean, if you've been listening to this album all your life, I guess it sounds normal, but when I when I heard it, listening to the full album today, when I was taking these notes, um, it, it sounded a little bit out of place. I like right. it. But yeah, Dear Prudence is awesome. And what kind of a name is Prudence, anyway? That's like... A, it's like a grandma name. Yeah, it's like Eunice well, or... Well, uh, she was young Bertha in the 60s, so she was named in the 50s. Yeah. Uh, okay, next one. Glass Onion is next. Glass Onion. Um, I like it, not my favorite. I appreciate the uniqueness of it. There was a movie named after it. I'm not sure why, but not, not much to say. Yeah, uh, me neither. John, same John same thing. My, my note about this was that there's... <laughs> doesn't it just doesn't get my attention. There's nothing yeah, that's after this like, one. Interesting title. I, I've, I've heard this song title for years and years. I was thought, what the hell is a glass onion? But yeah, I don't really care about that song. No, not, not, not that important in my... Book of favorite songs. Yeah. Next is uh oh, oh, la -di, la -la. La -la. Yeah. That song has been played so many times. Eh, it's not my kind of song. I don't like I don't know. I don't have much to say. What did I write about this song? Fun, always thought it was stupid. I always thought yeah. this was a stupid song. Even the title, Obladi oh, Oblada. Oh, um, it it's, I know it's a fun song and, and I like that that kind of fun happy Beatles and there's a lot of those uh, songs on this album um, I, I get that it's a fun song and people like it but it just it kind it's of bothers me it's been overplayed and there are yeah. many songs that don't get as much attention that are way better um, I think this is yeah it's like one of their signature songs but meh yeah kind of um, next is uh, Wild yeah, Honey Pie, Pie. I hate it. I hate it with passion. It's hate it. It's pointless. It's filler. It's fifty-three seconds. Yeah. It, it's not even a song. But it, it actually bothers me. Oh, I'm not. If you heard it, it starts with like a piano and a chorus in which Yoko Ono is singing, and uh, she goes, "Honey, bye." It's horrible. Uh, okay. I hate it. 
I can't right. know. Uh, next is Wild Honey. Uh, sorry, the continuing story of Bungalow Bell. I don't know, but I have a feeling you really like this one. I like it, right. and I like that Paul McCartney in the opening when he's like giving the intro, talking. He sounds American, and he wanted to do that. He wanted to sound like a Western cowboy. Yeah. Um, do you like it? Um, I, I like the title, the continuing story of Bungalow Bill. It's mm -hmm. a it's a cool title, but similar to Obladi Oblada. It's I mean it is a fun song, but eh, it's it's kind of a dumb song. I don't I really like care it. about this I like the rhythm. Much. All right. I appreciate that they try to look kind of like a westernish song. All right. Um, next, good. while my guitar gently uh, weeps. That's that's one of George Harrison's masterpieces. Yeah, maybe his his signature I song. No. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's probably one of his most famous songs. Yeah, it's a staple. It's a classic rock staple. Yeah, yeah. You can't say anything wrong. About um. This. Oh, really? Yeah, I like it a lot. Yeah. Really, you don't like it's that okay. I, I think you know you have a, a um, you're kind of predisposed when you when you know you know I've heard about this song all my life. I guess I started to hear it when I was a teenager, and uh, even listening to it again today. It... I love the guitar solo. Yeah, there's some good guitar in it. Some weeping guitar. Yeah, yeah it, weeping guitar. but um, yeah, I, I just don't really get that it's you know such a big you know renowned song. Mm -hmm. Um, Prince, obviously, I think Prince, maybe you don't know this, Prince did oh. a fucking awesome with, uh, oh, who is at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremony, I don't know when they, who they were inducting, I think it was Prince, Tom Petty, uh, maybe Eric Clapton, I don't know, if George Harrison, I have no idea who they were inducting or why they ended up playing that song, but that almost Prince? became, yeah, I want to listen to that, no, oh my god, that, I think a lot of people gave ownership to that song to Prince. Really? As a, oh my God, I it's incredible. To to that. Yeah. Oh my God, we're gonna listen to that uh, when we're yeah. down here. Incredible. Uh, I like that way better. Um, okay. Happiness is a warm gun. Um, I like it. Nothing much to say. Yeah, same with me. I like the song title. Happiness is a warm gun. It, it sounds like a cool title. It's been but... used as many in many posters. You know, like. To promote peace, and they use that that uh, phrase with a gun, with flowers, you know, to promote peace. All right. Um, next. Martha, my dear. Martha, my pear. I like that a lot, dear. Oh, I thought that was a P. I this thought I wrote Martha, my pear. Yeah, it's Martha, my dear. That Paul McCartney wrote to his English Shepherd dog, who was called Martha. Oh. Hmm. Do you know that? No, I don't know anything about this album. Okay. Um, Oh, no, I don't like it a lot. It, it sounds like, okay, I'm going to make a song for my dog. And then you write them a lame song and it's for your dog and nobody cares because it's your dog. What did I write about this song? Nothing to see here. Yeah, nothing to see here. It's, it's just uh, it's just one of 30 songs on this record. Um, next one is I'm, I'm so, so tired. tired. Oh, I love that song. Tengo sueño. I think it's Tengo so... muy sueño. No, it's Mucho more like sueño. I'm tired. Yeah. I'm more like a sick and saddle. Um, that's a John Lennon song. I always thought it was very unique that a song is called I'm So Tired. Because we've been tired many times, but nobody writes a song about it. But of course, it's not just tired, I'm physically tired, but it's more deep, deep and... Abstract? Abstract. But I like, I like slow songs a lot, and I like the rhythm of that song. What do you have to say? Um, this is one I wasn't familiar with when I listened to it today. I, uh -huh. I know the song titles, but when I heard a lot of these songs, I don't know the song. Um, I, I said that I, I not familiar with this one, but I, it seems one that I could get into. I do, seems we have a pretty mm -hmm. similar opinion about, so far yeah. anyway. Um, yeah, this is one that I, I feel like if I listen to it a few times, I could like it. And Ozzy has a song called So Tired from Bark at the Moon, 1983. Mm -hmm. Um, whatever that's worth, which is really nothing. I'm so tired. <laughs> tired. Yeah. Blackbird. Oh, I love, love, love that song. Love it, love it, love it. Yeah. I think me too. I, I like am... Blackbird. One of the better, for sure, for me. How can you not top love three the or four songs in that song? On the song. Um, I think Mary Collins. If you know, if you don't know her, she's like a hippie song writer singer folk singer from the 60s 
And I think she wrote a cover for this song, it was very good. But I love that song. I, it just makes you want to lay in a garden, look at the clouds and look at the birds and think of blackbirds. Okay, Mrs. It just makes you feel Parhead. like you wanna, Stunner. yeah. Many songs sound very hippie. Yeah. To me, it's like, let's just sit here in the grass and listen to music. That's mm -hmm. what I think about that, I love it. Hit me, next. Piggies. Piggies! <sighs> no sé, I don't know. Piggies was written by George Harrison and it's supposed to sound like a, like a royal song like from the uh, Louis XV court or his castle or something like that but then he has pigs snorting on the song yeah, which reminded like a contrast. Yeah, which reminded me of uh, there's a great, great one of my favorite Soundgarden songs on Bad Motorfinger called "Searching with My Good Eye Closed." That uh, this is a pig and uh, a cow goes. The sound effects remind me of the Beatles. Don't remind me of Soundgarden in any way, but the sound effects of piggies did remind me of "Searching with My Good Eye Closed" mm -hmm. on Bad Motorfinger by Soundgarden, 1991. And um, it's it, it, again, it's similar to "Obladi Oblada." And um, continuing story of Bungalow Bay. It's a fun song, kind of childlike. It yeah. sounds like you know a song yeah. that kids would like. It sounds like a like a song that George Harrison wrote because he was bored. The thing that makes it more unique is like the sound effects and the arrangement with the actual instruments. But if you just listen to George Harrison singing that song with no music or instruments, it's like. Ah, George Harrison wrote a song about piggies, and that's it. Yeah, kind of like Peter Chris songs. Nothing to they, say about that. Uh, they were maybe like token songs. I don't know. Rocky Next. Raccoon. Rocky Raccoon. Um, I don't have much opinion about it. For me, that was another one that's just kind of a fun, childlike song. It's kind of a funny song title, Rocky Raccoon. It's yeah, alliterative. It's like I'll give them story, that. No? I don't know, man. You you know better than I do. Um, yeah, I don't have much to say about that one. I, I don't think I even remember it. Yeah. Hmm. Don't Pass Me By. That was written by Ringo Starr and sung by Ringo Starr. Funny fact, um, in two songs here, I think they're Prudence, I don't, I don't remember which other one, Paul McCartney uh, played the drums because Ringo Starr quit the Beatles for a little... Oh, like two really weeks or something, no? yeah. like, like a really Because he said, period. you know what, I don't do enough in this band. Um, Again, like Peter Chris. I would like to do more things. It takes hours for you guys to record your songs and for me to record my drums track. So I'm just going to leave. So he left and then Paul McCartney wrote... Uh, in in anger drums. or frustration? Yeah. In, in goodwill? He, no, no, he was like, nah. Fuck this? Know. Yeah, fuck this. He left and then uh, they really, really insisted him to come back and he came back. And unlike, when, unlike Peter Chris. When he came back, they welcomed him in the recording studio with flowers in his drum kit, things like that. So yeah, Ringo Starr left us for a couple of weeks. He didn't die. <laughs> when she says Ringo Starr Don't left us, he's, he's still alive as far as I know. I don't like that song. Don't pass me by? Yeah. What did I think about In general, song? I don't love... Ringo Starr singing. What did, I, what did I write about Don't Pass Me By? Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here again. That song. Sorry, Ringo. Just, you could have maybe... Yeah. Stick with Act yeah. Naturally. They're yeah. gonna put me in I, the movie. I love Ringo Starr. He's like the They're gonna is. make a big star out of me. They'll make a film about a man who's sad and lonely. And all I gotta do is act naturally. Well, I'll bet you I'm gonna Arr. be a big star. Might win an Oscar, you can never tell. The movie's gonna make me a big star. Cause I can play the part so well. That's a great song. This, ah. Anyway, um, yeah, I don't, I don't love it. Why don't we do it in the road? I like it a lot. It's a dirty song. Is it What itch? are we gonna do in the road? Is it? You know what? Sexual intercourse? I was it's... singing that song one time in the car with my dad. <laughs> and my dad told me, he told me, don't sing that. What are you singing? No. Sorry. 
Right. Yeah, it's um, uh, it's it's like short. It. It's it's a minute and yeah. forty two. It's kind of filler. And it's just literally they, the lyrics are, "Why don't we do it on the road?" No one's gonna see us or Nobody something like that. Nobody's gonna watching. Nobody's, nobody's gonna be watching, watching us. us something like that. Why don't we do it on the road? We could be doing anything. It could be anything. The mind wanders. <laughs> and wonders. I like it. I like it. I will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. Yeah. Um, it, this this one is a minute 46. It feels incomplete. It feels like they started it and then just said, yeah, let's move on to the next song. Kind of filler, similar to yeah, like um, filler. Why Don't We Do It In The Road. Although, wait, Why Don't We Do It In The Road? No, it's more original. A little catchier, like, a I think. Punch. Yeah, um, but yeah, I, I think that's, it's kind of filler. Yeah, nothing more, yeah. more to say about it. And now the last song on the first record, number 17, 17 tracks, is Julia. Do you know who Julia is? Um, Julia Roberts. No, <laughs> it was John Lennon's mother. Like oh. he wrote that song to Julia, his mother. Uh, I guess, if you don't know, uh, his mother, I think, abandoned him. And I think he ended up living with his aunt and he was very sad and depressed because of this. And he wrote him a song. Um, I like it. It's kind of yeah. like, again, like an ethereal song. You can be sitting in the river. Ah, we really agree on this album. It's a nice, nice simple, acoustic, simple acoustic song. Yeah, yeah I, I like Julia. All right. Mm -hmm. hmm. I love, we agree on almost everything. So I love far. that the opening lyrics is Julia and he says, seashell eyes. That's nice. What are seashell eyes? She sells, she sells rather she shows sure, sure. <laughs> But I like that. It, it has very beautiful lyrics. Birthday. Da, da, yeah, da, da, now we're on the next da, da, da. song uh, on the on the second album, the first song like on the second the record. Really? Yeah. Um. <laughs> I hate it. I hate birthday. Did you say in the Blue Jays game? Yeah, I wrote some notes here. I I hate this song. I mean, you said, "Oh, this is funny." She was just singing the guitar, and what did I say? Ah. Uh, it's a stupid riff. Da, it's na, the na, only. Na, 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 na. I hate that song. Drum solo in the Beatles career. It's not a solo. AJ just, Soprano would disagree that that's a solo. It's, it's just a simple four chord. And he goes a little bit also off like tempo. Also like Peter Chris. Nobody knows it, but I have a good ear, and he goes off tempo a little bit. Um, I I hate that song. I think it's stupid. And it also, overplayed. yeah, because when I lived in Canada, they, I think every rock radio station played this, and the Blue Jays too. They used to play it like if if we were going to a Blue Jay game, and it was your birthday. You can submit, and then between innings, they would say "Happy Birthday" to following uh, people, yeah, and then they they put the picture up, and it was Dan, and it was the same on classic rock radio. It's her birthday, it's my birthday. You have to understand and remember that we both have very different backgrounds. He remembers things from Canada, and I remember things from Mexico. We don't play that song everywhere. It's to me, it's yeah. less played. But I remember there was a, a like a contest game show in Spain and they used this opening but they changed the lyrics but I always like that opening I love the guitar I love how rock and roll it sounds yeah it is kind of I, an old time and I always and send it to my friends like for I, I, I'm kind of scarred by that song if I hadn't heard it all these times on uh, you know the people's birthdays on the radio or at, at baseball games whatever I, I maybe I would have a different opinion hmm. but okay. I don't your blues I love it all right. It's, I think, probably the only blues, and it's written by John Lennon, sung by him. I downloaded it not too long ago. Um, yeah, I like it. It's a blues. Yeah, it's, it's obviously a bluesy song. Um, it, it's okay. It, it's kind of jammy. It has kind of a loose feeling to it. It doesn't, like, I don't mean this in a bad way. It doesn't, it doesn't seem like a well-structured song. Um, what did oh, I, I say think about it is this? a well-structured song. I think it is. Yeah, I just thought it was just a so-so eh, song, kind of jammy. I like that aspect of it, but overall, I've always liked it. Yeah. All right. Next. Mother Nature's Son. Mother Nature's Son. Is their hippiest song? Oh, I didn't. Didn't. The son of Mother that. Nature. All right. You don't see that it's uh, like a hippie title, at least. People on the top of that pyramid. Yeah. Yeah. I guess maybe it's because I know that this was written in their hippiest era. I guess I'm influenced and I kind of see them sitting in a circle writing songs. This this fire. one reminded me of uh, I'm So Tired in that mm -hmm. I wrote. 
I wasn't familiar with this song. I had heard it, but as I said, I don't listen to this, this album very much. Um, and it's also acoustic, and it is another one like um, yeah. I'm So Tired that I yeah. could get into it. I, I like this song. I, it seems that if you go to a party and you bring a guitar, you could sing that and those other two songs, and it would be almost like you're... It would go over else. well. It would go over well. Yeah. Next, uh, I, I want to say the title of this one. Everybody's got something to hide. It's going to take a long time, so you might want to fast forward when I say the title of this next song, and it's called Elderly Woman Behind the Counter of a Small Town. What are you saying? It's a Pearl Jam. That's another long album song title. Now, this is Everybody's Got Something to Hide Except Me and My Monkey. Um, I, I I love the title. It's a great no, title for I a song. No, I think it's pretentious. It's like, I'm going to choose a really different, complex title to make it look avant-garde. I, I liked it. Um, for me, the the opening guitar sounded like I couldn't. I, like I, I couldn't put my finger on, or maybe well, I couldn't put my finger on what song in particular. It sounded like a Rolling Stones uh, mm -hmm. riff, the opening, yeah. and through the whole song, there's great guitar in this song, which the Beatles, you know, they're not Slayer or something. They they were in a riff band, but cool, cool playing in that song. Uh, and then right at the very end, you wouldn't know this, and I'll, I'll maybe if I think, well, I never will. I'll play it for you. Ted Nugent, there is a song called uh, Free For All, and the, uh, the opening riff, or the main riff of Free For All, at the very, very end of Everybody Has Something to Hide Except Me and My Monkey, for two seconds it reminded me of Ted Nugent, Free For All. Uh, yeah. Maybe some Ted Nugent fans <laughs> are already familiar with that, and, and maybe this is a widely known thing, or maybe I'm the first person to pick up on that, but I, I caught that just for a second and a half. All right, next one, Sexy Sadie. One of my favorite songs. Mm -hmm. Love it. This song was written apparently when they went to India to do this meditation thing. The person that was leading the meditation was the Maharishi. And he started allegedly having inappropriate conduct with the ladies there. So the Beatles got very disappointed and they wrote a song to do kind of like. Um, Never meet your heroes. Yeah to, to uh, put that out there and they left the meditation they said uh, we're, we're just gonna leave this is bullshit we shouldn't be here what's going on so they wrote a song for him and instead of Sexy City it was going to be called Maharishi I don't know why they called it Sexy City but I like it a lot alright I, I think it's okay if you listen to the lyrics you'll see that they are talking about someone they said you, you've made a fool of everyone uh, what have you done? So, and then after that, because the Beatles many years later thought that they had been too tough on him, I think George Harrison worked on something, uh, I don't know, for the benefit of the Maharishi or something like that to make peace. That's it. I think it's okay. Kelter Skelter. Oh, I love oh. it. Love it, love it, love it. Very heavy. Something that you wouldn't expect from the Beatles. And it starts like right away the lyrics are. Yeah. Love it, love it, love it. Proto metal, I would maybe even say. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. That's true. Um, I think that's what they say. They said that, that was like the first metal song. Mm -hmm. or, like, yeah, like proto metal. There's an argument. I, I needless to say, this is probably my my two favorite songs are the ones that were covered because I was introduced to them by Dear Prudence by Saigon Kick and Helter Skelter by Jose? Motley uh -huh. Crue. Ah. I'm sure I've played that over the years. Cadaver, um, I talked about Cadaver in the last video, I think. Yeah, the last video was Cadaver. They did a cover of Helter Skelter. I think when we saw them live, they did it, right? Or maybe you weren't with me at that time. Um, but they recorded it. Cadaver did it live. Motley Crue, same with uh, Saigon Kick doing Dear Prudence. I never heard uh, Helter Skelter until I got Shout the Devil, one of my, still one of my top 10 albums ever. Motley Crue sucks. But oh my God, Shout the Devil is incredible and Helter Skelter. It sounds like a Motley Crue song. Cause that's a, that's a, I mean, as far as Motley Crue goes, <laughs> Shout the Devil is really a heavy metal album and Helter Skelter, Motley Crue's version is a real heavy metal song. Motley Crue, I think, owned that song just like Saga and Kick doing mm -hmm. Dear Prudence. I think metal bands, any metal band could do a good cover yeah. of uh, Helter Skelter. Good, good riffing in that song. I, I love Helter Skelter. I don't think I had listened to much heavy metal, if you want to call it like that, before that. Hold on. Um, and I listened to this song and I thought, I think I 
going to get into like those these kind of heavier songs i'm gonna listen to the heavy metal now <laughs> and then i kind of it kind of opened the doors for me to heavier music and charles manson this is a book i think i've read this book three times first time was in 1989 was when i read helter skelter uh and also he got piggies from oh, the yeah. beatles too and actually because uh that's the white album was a big <laughs> Influence on Charles Manson. He goes, ah, uh, yeah. It's a good, it's a good killing album. Yeah, the rumor is it, it's that all the girls uh, in the what do you call the it? The family. The family used to play this song over and over. Ah, and you know what? Instructed by Charles Manson. One, and yeah. Like, I one of know, the uh, family members. Songs. Her name is Sadie Mae Lutz. I wonder if she took her uh, name after maybe. sexy Sadie. And one of the girls when she was doing the killing. She wrote piggies on the wall. That was. Um, that's a bad. That's a bad thing. This album got bad reputation that shouldn't have had. One more thing. When I was in, I think in sixth grade. Um, Leslie Van Houten, I think that was um, who it was. Leslie Van Houten, I think. No, it was somebody else. No. I don't know. Um, the teacher showed us a video that said talked about satanic music. That you know, if you play records backwards. It says bad messages or messages to the devil or something. And our teacher was like, don't listen to this album. It has messages yeah. that are like for the devil. So and every like, kid went home and listened. No, I wasn't music. because I was on sixth grade and I was very well behaved and innocent. I was like, I don't want to worship the devil. I don't want to listen to it. And then I was like, I was fine. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, he doesn't have a problem with, with devils. Um, so that was Helter Skelter. I like it a lot. Not long. Yeah. Long, long, long. You know, I don't even remember it. Really? All right. Well, we can go over that quickly because I also wrote... Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. Yeah. So who we sings it? Do you even know who sings it? Oh, John Lennon, I think. All right. Yeah. So that, that's... We can... It's one of on. those songs I always fast forward because I was like, eh. It, so I don't even remember it. Nothing to yeah. see here. Revolution 1. Revolution 1. Now this version is not the famous version, right? It's not, it's not like the, 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 I mean the, the, re, the revolution, you say, that one, I'm not going to sing, but that's kind of a, he, it's not heavy, it's got more guitar, this, yeah, right, that's more guitar driven, this one is more slower, bluesy, yeah, this was so. maybe the original? No, I think the original is the other one. Okay. Um, I like it a lot, look, 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 um. I, I like the guys. original version, or whatever. The previous version. The, the 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 more rocking, the one that everybody knows. I like that one better than mm. this one. Honey pie. Honey, honey pie. pie. Um. What? Yeah, I'm kind of the same. What did I write? Fun, but I don't care. Yeah, it, it is a fun song, similar to Rocky Raccoon and Obladi Oblada. It's supposed to but sound yeah, I just like don't care about this timey, one. I think, written by Paul. Hmm. I don't really have much to say. All right. Savoy Truffle. That was, I think, your cherry songs? Uh, can you sing a part of it? No, I just wrote that there were horns all over it, lots and lots of horns. <laughs> and it's a very bright, happy sounding song. Hmm. Savoy Truffle. I think it was written by George Harrison. No, you know what? The songs that I don't remember is because they didn't make a lasting impression. Well, it's a and long album, and, and, and we're getting yeah, it. we're getting towards the end of it, and it's it's. It's uh, not even get, that I hate it; it's just that I go. Hmm, listener fatigue to starts to set in by the time you yeah. get to the twenty seventh song on the album. Yeah. Uh, okay, three more. Cry, baby, cry. I like it. It's one of those hippie songs that you sit next to the river with your guitar. Cry, baby, cry. Um, I, I this one for me was mm -hmm. eh, another nothing to see her mm -hmm. song. Cry, no, baby, cry. Um, next one, nine. Revolution Nine. I never listened to it. Stupid, I, stupid, hated, pointless hated, song. Hated with passion. Eight minutes and twenty-one seconds of garbage. And Jokono uh, sings in that one or says something. Um, oh yeah, she also sings in the continuous story of Bungalow Bill. Oh. Hey. Yeah, it's stupid. It's it, it this 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 song. It's not even a song. It's just like a it's piece. It's freaking me out. Yeah, it should have been a minute and a half. Two and minutes. I remember there's uh, Ringo Starr going number nine, 
At the beginning, yeah. Nine? And then through the whole song. Number nine? nine, yeah. Oh, it just um, made me dizzy. This reminds me of uh, Melvin's have a song on Houdini. It was called uh, The Beagle, The Regal Beagle, Beagle something. That It's also equally pointless. It's eight minutes of just... I, I also... Fast pure forward. filler. Yeah, there's no reason to listen to this. To land on the very beautiful Good, good Night song, song by Ringo Starr. I like it. Good you know, night is Ringo Starr. Ringo Starr singing, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. I I I like it. It's, it was very soothing after all the craziness in this song. Yeah, I like that song too. Good night. It's uh, strings, a lot of strings in that one. It's a uh, it's a nice song. It's quiet melody. Yeah, good ending to this song, similar to the end on Pearl Jam Backspace album. Uh, a good quiet ending. I think Ringo Starr is not the best singer, but I think he sung nicely and he controlled his voice on this one. All right. Uh, so now going back to what I would normally say at the beginning, my overall thoughts about this album. This is like the definition. People love to say overrated, underrated. I guess by, by that standard for me, this album is vastly overrated. It's, it's just way too long. I think it's, I, I listened to it in full today. I, I guess it was around 90 minutes, maybe 95 minutes. It's way too long, and in 1967 or 68, 68 yeah. I think this came out, this must have been mind-blowing that, that a record was so long, and it, I think it's unnecessarily long. How many how many songs on there that we both agreed, Yeah. and everybody's, you know, obviously the songs that we didn't like, somebody else loves. I'm sure there are people that don't like Dear Prudence or Helter Skelter or Blackbird, um, but a lot of songs I just thought, eh, you know, to me, this is, it doesn't represent what I think of as the Beatles and it, it's just it's too long it's kind of a lot of just it's it's kind of like they just thought let's let's um we have all this music let's just put everything it's like they put everything into a pot it has very and different it styles yeah not necessarily representative of the Beatles I think it, it's important because of its historic context uh, yeah it is for sure there, I, I'm not art yeah for the I'm importance not. that I had after in pop culture because it was written in a very unique setting in India with all the situations going on. Um, if you read about the Beatles, you'll find more about this trip in India. There were many things happening. I think uh, George Harrison's girlfriend's sister, um, Patty Boyd's sister, was also in this trip and she had something to do with somebody else. Everybody was getting on with everybody else. All right. Well, th this album for me is missing the elements, as I mentioned, I, God, I love Help, and all the things I like about Help, really none of them are on this record. They're not the, 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 the background vocals harmonizing, there, there's, there's a lot of stuff on here, it's not even that it's bad, it's just, it's not catchy, it, it has many unnecessary songs, and I really don't like that this is, I think it's the first album Tighten in, in which you can hear Joko Ono singing. Why is, why is she here? What is she doing here? No, no, she was there. And um, nobody likes that. No, no real Beatles fan likes to have Joko no, in an album singing. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, nice. I guess this was the beginning of the end, right? It was the beginning of the end. All right. And last night, Kiss was the end of the end. 1968. Oh. They had uh, two album, two after this, Let It Be and, I well, Let It Be was recorded yeah. next. But really, uh, Abbey Road was released next. Yes. But Let It Be was recorded next. After next, this. Yeah. yeah. So this is their third to last album. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, anyway, say so I'm not diminishing the the significance or importance of this record. I I know its place in um, in music history. Just for me personally, I I I love Help way better. Revolver, Rubber Soul. Yeah. Uh, Hard Day's Night, I like a lot. Um, I don't know. I like those better than this. Anyway, uh, anything else to add? Um, no, I don't think so. I'm just glad I have a beautiful edition. Again, thanks to Miguel for giving that to me. Uh, you've made me very happy. Thank you. Yeah, at least somebody <laughs> can. <laughs> all right, that is all. Uh, for the, the Beatles, normally this is where I hold the record up. I go like this, but I'll, I'll let Lenny do it. See. Yeah, yeah, it's hold just it white. like that. All right, so that is all for the uh, the self-titled Beatles, the White Album, yes.
<gasps> it wasn't recording.